Well, hello, shrimp keepers. What's up? Do you want to have happier and healthier shrimp? Do you want to have a lower maintenance ecosystem? Do you want to learn about some of the great diversity that we find in our tanks? If so, then continue watching this video. In it, we're going to talk about an extremely common mistake that shrimp keepers make, which is thinking that a cycled tank is ready for shrimp automatically. And that is not the case. This is Shrimply Explained, it is all in the name. I mean, we explain things about shrimp. Pretty simple. A cycled tank simply means that the tank can process about 2 ppm of ammonia into nitrates within about a 24 hour period. This does tell you that a certain subset of nitrifying bacteria are well established in the aquarium but it does not tell you anything about the rest of the ecosystem. Don't get me wrong, a cycled tank is an important step towards a healthy shrimp tank. It is necessary, but not sufficient. Instead, what we wanna focus on is a mature or well-established ecosystem. Once a mature ecosystem is established, then you don't have to worry so much about parameter fluctuations, cycle crashes, water changes, overfeeding, parasites, everything just becomes so much easier. So it's worth it for both you and your shrimp to take this six to eight weeks, be patient, and I promise it'll pay off. Now let's go over the three signs that we look for in our tanks to know that they are not only cycled, but also mature and stable ecosystems for our shrimp. First, let's start off at the smallest level, and that is algae. If you've had a tank before, you've probably seen some algae. It's a very common problem for a lot of people. And in some cases, it absolutely is a problem. For example, blackbeard algae, hair algae, these can be signs of an imbalance in light or in nutrients in your tank. That being said, there are also some good algaes. So green dust algae, green spot algae, these are actively benefiting your tank because they form the base of the food pyramid. While they are photosynthesizing, they're also creating proteins, sugars, and other organic compounds that are being released into the biofilm that they produce. All of these nutrients go to feed other bacteria like the nitrifying bacteria that we need for the nitrogen cycle, but also so many other different species that all contribute to a more nutritious biofilm in your tank. This biofilm feeds your shrimp, and so the more diversity you have in it, the more diverse and healthy diet your shrimp are going to have, and the less you have to feed them. In addition, algae and other bacteria, fungi that are in the biofilm are absorbing nutrients from the water. They're, they're actively doing biological filtration on every single surface in your tank. In fact, healthy biofilm has been shown to support shrimp like Neocaridina for months at a time. In one study by Veronica Viao and team in 2016, they tested three different materials that they grew biofilm on and then put those into tanks with Neocaridina. After that, they left the tanks alone, no water changes, no food, just top offs of the aquarium. Over those two months, two out of the three groups had 100% survival rate and successfully went through their life cycle having babies. The third only had about an 85% survival rate, but they were growing biofilm on plastic bottles that had very little surface area and therefore did not support the shrimp nearly as well. When the researchers did DNA tests on this biofilm to discover what species were in it, they found cyanobacteria and various chlorophyta species, both of which are types of green algae. While most hobbyists don't have access to DNA tests, what we can do is look for signs of visible algae growth on our glass walls and substrate. This is a sign that the food web is developing and is very positive for our ecosystem. In typical tanks, there should be some good green algae growth on the glass after about six to eight weeks. If you haven't seen some develop by about the four week mark, then we do suggest either increasing the light intensity or the duration in order to actually see that develop. And again, we're not talking about tons of algae. We're talking about a light dusting on the glass and substrate, because if there's too much, then it can block out light from plants and kill them. So we do not want that. We just want to get a little bit so that they can help support the biofilm in the tank. That's all we care about. So 
let it establish for a little bit, let it feed all the flora and fauna in your tank. And then if you really don't like it at that point, you can scrape it off the glass, take it away, and then work on balancing the nutrients and the lighting in your tank from there on. Moving on to the next largest thing, which is microorganisms. Many new aquarists find these little tiny white bugs that are moving around in their tank. They're concerned or they don't like seeing that. And I think that that comes from a kind of misunderstanding of what these are. By doing a little bit of research and learning what these guys actually do, you'll find it's easier to accept and appreciate just how much they do bring to an ecosystem. Microorganisms are small, multicellular creatures that live in your tank, many of which are visible to the naked eye. Some examples include copepods, daphnia, and detritus worms, but there are many, many more species that can be in your tank. What all of these do is break down waste into smaller components that the bacteria are then better able to process. This means they prevent debris buildup and reduce the chance of ammonia spikes. It also means they prevent overfeeding or at least significantly reduce the risk of overfeeding because you have these microorganisms that can multiply to eat any leftover food and again, prevent ammonia spikes from happening because of it. If you didn't have that, then the food would just rot and really impact your water quality in a bad way. In addition, shrimp also eat copepods, daphnia, and other microorganisms, thereby contributing to a more diverse diet. You should see a variety of microorganisms build up in your tank in a matter of about six to eight weeks again. Given even more time, and these populations have more of a chance to establish themselves and also compete with each other for resources. So the more you have, the more diversity you have in your tank, the less likely any one is to outcompete the others and then take over the entire tank. How do we get microorganisms into our tanks? There are two ways. First is by preceding a filter. So that means putting a brand new filter, either I mean, canister, hob, your sponge filter, into a well-established aquarium that's healthy, and then you run that for a few weeks. During that time, it develops algae, bacteria, microorganisms on it that you then transfer to the new tank. The other way is by adding live plants. And now, even if you treat them properly, you quarantine them, some microorganisms are almost certainly going to get into your tank. That's frankly, a good thing because microorganisms, again, as we mentioned, provide a lot of benefits to the ecosystem. So don't worry too much about it. The problem is if you don't see microorganism growth after a few weeks of your tank being set up, then that might be a sign that there's something wrong with the ecosystem. For the most part, we recommend just giving it a little bit more time. And if you can, trying to pull either a few plants from a well-established tank, whether that's yours, a friend's, see if you can get a cup of water from the local fish store with some of the copepods, daphnia in it, and then add that to the tank. Just have to be careful that it's from a reputable person with healthy tanks. One of the keys to a great ecosystem is healthy growing plants. Plants do a lot of great things for your ecosystem. They help oxygenate the water, they help purify the water and remove heavy metals. They also help to improve substrate health if they have roots. And lastly, they provide much more surface area for biofilm to grow on and feed your shrimp. We cannot emphasize enough the benefits that these plants provide to the ecosystem, but that's only possible if the plants are healthy. If a plant is healthy, that means it has bright green growth, no holes in its leaves, or anything like that. If it's not healthy, then they can actually cause problems because they can decompose, cause ammonia spikes in your tank, and that can lead to other issues. The best way to get healthy plant growth is to thoroughly research what plants you wanna put in your tank before you actually go out and buy them. Plants require different nutrient levels, different methods of delivery for the nutrients. For example, some prefer through the roots, some prefer through the water column. Others do well in low light conditions, whereas some need high light conditions. Do your research and you are much more likely to improve your chances of success with the plants and with your ecosystem as a whole. Some plants that we recommend are basically any variety of moss because all of their little tendrils provide a ton of surface area for beneficial bacteria to grow on, for microorganisms to grow on, which again all contribute to improve water quality and improve the diet for your shrimp. We also recommend floating plants or plants that have access to the air. Plants that have access to the air more readily take up nitrates, whereas plants that are submerged more readily take up ammonia. 
having a balance of the two means that you are less likely to have ammonia spikes, nitrate buildup, and less likely to need to do water changes. To summarize, if our goal is to have a low maintenance, balanced, healthy ecosystem to successfully keep neocaridina and caridina, we recommend looking for three things while your tank is establishing over at least a six to eight week period after being set up. These three things are first, visible green algae growth, specifically green algae, because there are many species that are very beneficial and they form the base of the food chain to support microorganisms and larger fauna like shrimp and snails. The next thing we want to see are visible microorganisms. That means little tiny specks of copepods going around on your substrate, on the glass. These are a good sign that your tank is healthy and developing a good food chain that will support your shrimp. They also help to break down debris and prevent overfeeding that would otherwise cause ammonia spikes and affect water quality. And lastly, healthy plants with new growth. They oxygenate the water, they filter it, and they provide surface area for shrimp to feed on. So again, very beneficial. All of this in general happens within about six to eight weeks. That's when we start seeing shrimp keepers have a much higher rate of success. So we highly recommend having a little bit of patience here because that patience goes a long way towards just simplifying your journey as a shrimp keeper and making it so much easier. If you've learned something from this video and want to support our goal of shrimpifying shrimp keeping, then please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing it with a friend if you think they'd be interested. In addition, other resources are linked down below, so please feel free to check those out. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.